Hi. Um, I hope you guys can hear me. Yes, sir. Hello, sir. Hello. Yeah. Okay. So we'll start with this particular question. We have a polynomial P of X, which is given like this X plus A1 times X plus A2 and so on till X plus A10 where AI belongs to R. All of the A's basically are real numbers. And they're saying, suppose all the 11 coefficients of P of X are positive, which statements are true? So first of all, I hope you guys understand why there will be 11 coefficients. All the 11 coefficients of P of X are positive. So why is there 11 coefficients? So because maximum power of X will be 10 and it will go up to mm. a constant term. Mm. That will be zero power for X. So there will be something like this. So X power 10 and some constants and all. So basically it will have 11 terms. And they are saying that all the coefficients are positive. Now we have to check these statements. P of X has a global minimum. Each of the AIs are positive and so on. Let's look at the first statement. Anybody has any idea why whether this is true or false? P of X must have a global minimum. The way to think about this is notice that P of X is a degree 10 polynomial, right? If it is degree 10, whenever you draw a graph, you will realize that as X tends to infinity, the graph tends to infinity, right? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Also, if X tends to minus infinity, then also minus infinity power 10 will be positive infinity, right? Basically, what I'm saying is for both very small and very large numbers, P of X tends to infinity, right? Right, sir. So that means think about it from this side, left side, it must be decreasing like this, but then it has to turn somewhere and increase again, right? Yes, sir. 
the graph has to turn somewhere and increase again because it has to go from plus infinity then become finite because for example at zero notice that p of x is a finite value right it has to come down from plus infinity become finite and then again go up to plus infinity that means it definitely has to make a turn somewhere, which means it will have a minima somewhere, right? It could make multiple minimas, but definitely it will have some minimum point somewhere, right? Right, sir. So therefore it must have a global minimum. Global minimum means the minima of all the local minimas. The smallest local minima is the global minimum. So what we are guaranteed is that there will be a minima. And if even there is one minima, then there will be a global minima then. If there are multiple, you will take the lower one. If there is only one, then that is the global minimum, right? Right. So, so I hope from the graph, it is clear that option one is correct. Option two. If anyone has any ideas, let me know for option two. Can you tell me the roots of this polynomial px? What are the roots? Minus one, minus a one, minus a two, hmm. and minus a three. So till minus a ten, right? These are the roots, right? And the question has also said that the coefficients, all the eleven coefficients of p of x are positive. So. That means what? The polynomial is looking like something like this, right? Some positive number, positive number x power 9, positive number x power 8, and so on, right? Positive number times x plus some positive number. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Yes, sir. So think about it. If the every coefficient is positive, every coefficient is positive, then can it have a positive root? Can Px have a positive root? By that I mean, if you put a positive number into P of X, can it ever become zero then? No, no right? No. It cannot become zero. For example, P of two, every coefficient is positive, then it will all be adding up, right? Everything will be positive, right? Yes. Basically what we can say is because all the coefficients of P of X are positive, it cannot have a positive root. So that means all the roots are negative, right? All the roots of P of X mm -hmm. equals to zero have to be negative. Yes. I hope everyone understands this. 
this has to be true because the coefficients are positive, right? Right, sir. And we already know the roots, no? Right? Yes, sir. And now we know that all the roots have to be negative. That means minus A1 is negative, minus A2 is negative, and minus A10 is also negative, which means A1, A2, A10 must be positive. That is option two. Each AI must be positive. It is coming because the roots have to be negative and coefficients are positive. And the roots are already known. Roots are minus A1, minus A2. So from there, we can figure out the sign of A1, A2 and V. Right? <clears throat> I hope it is clear. Yes, sir. Now think about P dash X and think about the roots of P dash X. We know that all the 10 roots of P of X are negative, right? All the 10 roots of P of X, minus A1, minus A2, all of them have to be negative. Minus A10, all of them are on the left side of zero. These are roots of P of X. What can we say about roots of the derivative of a polynomial? That is, uh, P dash x is also zero. What, what? Yes, P dash x is also zero. That means the derivative of this polynomial is also zero. Mm -hmm. And uh, then from that aspect, we can say that uh, this uh, uh, roots are uh, also negative. Why are you saying roots are also negative? Because uh, if it is a positive polynomial, then if you, if you uh, turn it into a zero, means that dp uh, x of dx, then you have to be, uh, there There must be a combination of positive and negative kind of that. Since the, there is a 10 uh, roots are there, so we can uh, say that there will be 10, then 9, likewise uh, the coefficient will be uh, shifted. So if the negative is then only you can get that, uh, the combination to nullify each other's. To get the zero. Okay. More or less you are correct, but not exactly. The way to say this is Sir, the yeah. correct. Yeah. Uh, it's also a polynomial which has positive coefficients. No? So we uh, cannot. Both of you are saying the same thing. That's it fine. cannot take up any positive value to become. Mm. The other way to think about it is between any two roots of the P of X you should realize that there will be a root of p dash x. What am I saying? Between any two roots of p of x, two roots of p of x equals zero, there is a root of... I will take a change in direction. This is a consequence of something called Rolle's theorem. Have you seen that in calculus, anyone? Rolle's theorem, if you remember, if a function f of x is continuous and differentiable in A to B, continuous and differentiable in A to B interval, and f of A is equal to f of B, then there is a C in the interval a b such that f dash c is zero i hope everyone has seen this before yes sir so what i'm saying is anytime there is a function which is continuous and differentiable and the values of the function at two points are same f of a is equal to f of b then the function has to either it will go up and come down or it will go down and come up. It has to turn, right? Mm -hmm. There will be a point where the derivative will be having zero slope. 
This is the C point. Correct? Right, sir. So in this case, we already know that the Px function is becoming zero at these points, minus A1, minus A2. So we can say P of minus A1 is equal to P of minus A2 and apply Rolle's theorem on the Px function. We can say that there will be a point in the middle here somewhere where P dash of C will be equal to zero, right? Because at this point, P of X is zero. Both are zero endpoints, right? So between any two roots of the original P of X polynomial, there is a new root for the derivative. I hope that is clear. Right, sir. That will mean all the new roots, all the roots of the derivative, nine roots will be real and will be negative. Because all the original roots are negative, right? Right, sir. Between, between the negative integers, they will be negative only and they will all be real also. I hope that under, that makes you understand what is happening. Yes, sir. So third and fourth option, both are correct. All the roots of P dash X are real and they are negative. What you guys are saying is also correct only. It is just saying Rolle's theorem only in an indirect way, what you are saying. The coefficients of P dash X are also positive and we can do the same thing again, right? Okay, so that is the solution of this problem. Basically in this problem, all the four options were correct. Such types of questions are also common. This is this was the CMI 2015 question. Now let's look at another problem. Find a rational polynomial. Wait one second, not a rational polynomial. Question two, part A. Find a polynomial P of X with root 2 plus i as a root and p of x has real coefficients. This is just part A, very easy problem. Part B is find a polynomial q of x with rational coefficients and having least degree such that root 2 One second, such that root 2 plus i is a root. C part is show that any other polynomial, any other polynomial f of x with rational coefficients and f of root 2 plus i is equal to 0 has q of x as a factor. So each part builds on the other. So first you have to solve A, then you have to do B and so on. Uh, 
is it a for uh, C plus C? Uh, what what? Let me see you. Let me see question number C. You have mentioned a for root two plus what is that C or what? Yes. Root two plus I. Ah, okay. Start with the part A. Part A is super easy. After that, you can think about B and C. The main idea in the problem is that non real roots of any polynomial px which has real coefficients will come in conjugate pairs conjugate pairs does everyone understand this logic why yes sir Right. What is the reason? Tell me. Sir, so like in a quadratic, when we will be solving, if mm -hmm. it uh, in root, it uh, discriminant must be uh, less than zero for uh, mm -hmm. imaginary roots or non-real roots. So it will plus minus something of imaginary number on solving the quadratic formula. Right. That is one way to say it. Another way to say it is if you have a quadratic, for example, or any equation, actually, the sum of the roots is minus b by a and product of the roots is c by a right correct now if the quadratic had real coefficients if it had real coefficients what will happen b by a and c by a will be real numbers right right sir so is it possible to have if it is b by a and c by a are both real and suppose alpha is a con complex number right then the other beta must be also complex in such a way that it becomes on adding to alpha it cuts the can it cuts out the i part right right sir do you understand what i'm saying yes sir it cannot come except in conjugate pairs because only conjugate pairs will give us some also real and product also real. If you take any other, for example, root 2 plus i, if I take 3 minus 2i as the other root, right? If you take 3 minus 2i as the other root, you will realize that sum and product both will not be real. But that is not possible because px has real coefficients. The only way to make px having real coefficients is take the other root as root 2 minus i. I hope that is clear to everyone. This is a pretty basic theory. Yes, sir. Okay. So tell me what is the polynomial for part A? x square minus 2 root 2x plus 3. Hmm. So that is the smallest polynomial. That is the degree two polynomial you have said, which is which is having root two plus i as a root, right? The main thing that is that the px has to have real coefficients. So here we can see the coefficients are all real numbers. The way to get it is by realizing that root two plus i and root two minus i must be roots. Is it clear to everyone how this is coming? Yes, sir. Okay. Then think about question two, B part. The same logic can be extended to rational coefficients also. Usually if the coefficients are rational, then the irrational roots will come in pairs. And it's the same logic. Some of the two rational roots will be rational. Product of the two rational roots will be rational. So you have to be careful about that. 
Here you have to find a polynomial qx having least degree, the smallest degree polynomial, which has root 2 plus i as a root. Sir, we can take other root to be minus root 2 minus iota. Minus root 2 can live out. So minus root out. two minus root two minus iota is not the conjugate of root two plus i. Do you understand? But sir, won't it can say the uh, won't it make the rational part correct? Lekin subse pahla cheez to real karna hai na? Sub okay, rational numbers to real numbers hi hai na? Yes sir. Root 2 plus i is an imaginary root. So, it conjugate to be Because coefficients yes, sir, are rational, so real is the real, right? So, yes, this is not the conjugate, no, then. The problem will be that the other root, some of the roots and product of the roots will not cancel out nicely. If you take product of the roots here, what is coming? Alpha, beta. If you take these two. It will be negative of root 2 plus i whole square, right? So, i bach ja rahe, right? Yes, sir. Samaj mein aare problem kya hai? Yes, sir. So, first thing that you have to take is root 2 minus i is also a root, right? Correct? Yes, sir. So, what we know so far is at least the polynomial will be x minus root 2 plus i times x minus root 2 minus i. Ye to ho gai. Right? Correct? Right, sir. So let's see what comes from here. Actually, this will give us the same thing as before, no? The previous one, right? It will give us x square minus 2 root 2 x plus 3 equals 0, right? Correct? Right, sir. So we have a quadratic which has root 2 plus i as a root, but the problem is that one of the coefficients is irrational. Right? Right, sir. We have to make a polynomial such that all the coefficients are rational, right? Right, sir. So basically, this doesn't work. So we have to think of some other polynomial. How to make the roots rash, uh, coefficient rational here? One way to do it would be take x square plus 3 on one side and take this on the other side, right? And then square it, right? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. If you square it, you will get 8x square, right? And you will get x power 4 plus 9 plus 6x square is equal to 8x square, right? Right, sir. Basically, it will become x power 4 minus 2x square plus 9 equals 0. Correct? Correct, sir. Do you understand that the two roots that we had taken will still be the roots of this? Yes, sir. Because we got it from the this equation only, no? We have squared it and gotten this, right? Right, sir. I hope everyone is understanding what I am saying. Other people, are you understanding? Okay, fine. Uh, so, this is a fourth degree equation and we have satisfied the conditions of the problem here. It has rational coefficients and it has root 2 plus i as a root, right? Right, Correct? sir. One thing that you should try and show here is that two degree method it was not working out. We have got it in four degree, but is it possible to do it in three degrees, right? We should eliminate that possibility, no? It three degree may not over. Yes, sir. So basically, what I would say is you can prove prove that there is no cubic polynomial cubic polynomial 
with rational coefficients with rational coefficients and root 2 plus i is a root basically the same problem we have to show that there is no cubic like that right correct yes sir so what we will say is we know that if root 2 plus i is a root then the other root is root 2 minus i and there will be one third root which will be an unknown root let's say r right these are the roots of the cubic correct right sir so the cubic will start looking like this x minus root 2 plus i times x minus root 2 minus i times x minus r and basically we know the multiplication of this this is x minus x square minus 2 root 2 x plus 3 times x minus r right correct right, so if you multiply it out properly now fully multiply it x cube minus it will get 2 root 2 minus r x square plus 2 root 2 r x minus 3 r right this is the cubic that is coming right correct right, sir. now we have to say that there is no cubic with rational coefficient so right now this has to be rational no? correct yes sir if it satisfies the conditions of the problem, all the three numbers, 2 root 2 minus r, 2 root 2 r, and 3 r must be rational. Correct? Yes, sir. But notice that now it's a problem because to make this rational, you need to have r as root 2 into 2 or something like that, right? Right, sir. And that will make this also rational, but it will make this one irrational. Do you yes, understand? Sir. So basically, if you assume that there is a cubic polynomial such that satisfies the conditions of the problem, at the end, you are getting a contradiction. No? The coefficients are not all rational. Yes, sir. I hope everyone is following what I'm saying. So basically, we have proved that three degree may it is not possible to do it. And we have already gotten a four degree answer. Four degree polynomial we already got, right? Yes, sir. So that is the answer. That four degree one that we had found, which was x power four minus six x square and all plus six minus two x square plus nine. That would be your answer for part B. I hope it is clear. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, part C was saying another proof type of question. Part C was saying show that any other polynomial fx, any other rational polynomial, rational fx such that f of 2, f of root 2 plus i is zero has qx as a factor as qx as a factor and by the way we have already found our qx qx was for us was the x power 4 minus 2x square plus 9 equals 0 right yes sir in part b we have found that so what we need here is to show that if you can make any other higher polynomial also, it will always have qx as a factor. It has to be rational coefficients and it has to have root 2 plus i as a root. Right? Yes, sir. So what we will do, we already know qx has rational coefficients. qx has rational coefficients. So what we will do first is we will do divide fx by qx. Divide fx by qx. You know the division algorithm of any polynomial you can divide by another, right? So you'll get qx times, let's say, ax plus bx. Here, ax is the quotient actually, and bx is the remainder. 
do you understand everything what i am saying yes sir here we are doing division algorithm division of two polynomials and because f of x is supposed to have rational coefficients and we are dividing by another polynomial with rational coefficients obviously you should realize that this should also be rational and this should also be rational right correct no yes yes sir great now now we will use the fact that root 2 plus i is a root of f of x right correct so f of root 2 plus i is 0 we also know that q of root 2 plus i is also 0 right correct right sir everyone knows that no q of root 2 plus i is 0 because we got this from the previous part we did that there right yes sir so if i put root 2 plus i in this division algorithm formula what is coming we are getting b of root 2 plus i should be 0, no? Yes, can you, sir. Can you see that? Yes, sir. Great. And by division algorithm, we know b has to have degree less than or equal to 4 because q had degree 4, not less than or equal to. It has to be less than 4, right? Right, sir. You are dividing f of x by q of x. q of x has degree 4, right? So, remainder per degree will be 3 or less, right? Yes, sir. And remainder, we just said, just said now that remainder has to be rational, right? Correct? Right, sir. So, now we are getting that a rational polynomial with degree less than 4 is having root 2 plus i as a root which is a contradiction. We just proved that wrong in the previous part. Because in the previous part, if you remember, we showed that three degree polynomial cannot have root two plus i as a root and be rational, right? Yes, sir. Is it clear how everything is connected? Yes, sir. So basically, we'll get a contradiction here because bx will have degree 3 or less and we have already proved that degree 3, it is not working out. You cannot be rational and have root 2 plus i as a root. But here it is looking like it has to be rational and root 2 plus i has to be a root. So that is a contradiction. So therefore, what we know now is that such a polynomial bx does not exist, which means what? bx must be 0 then, right? Remainder polynomial cannot exist, no? Yes, sir. So then bx must be a 0 type of thing because division to kar sakte hai, right? right? Division sir. of fx by qx is possible. The only thing is that remainder polynomial cannot be like that. Which means there is 0 remainder, which means that fx is divisible by qx. Is it clear what is happening? Yes, sir. So everything was connected. If you see a part A, part B, part C, slowly it is building up the information. I hope you have understood how we built all of the theory here. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Let's move on then. Uh, Right. Okay. We have suppose f of x is equal to x power n by n factorial plus x power n minus 1 by n minus 1 factorial plus so on till x plus 1. We have to show that f of x is equal to 0 has no repeated roots. Everyone knows the meaning of repeated roots? Repeated 
Repeated roots means double roots. Same root multiple times, right? Right, sir. We have to prove that this function f of x has no repeated roots. One thing I will tell you as a hint, if R is a repeated root of f of x, then f of r is 0 and f dash r is also 0. You should know this. For example, if you take a quadratic x minus 2 whole square, this will obviously have two repeated roots at 2, right? Basically, it is x square minus 4x plus 4. This quadratic has repeated roots. So you can see f of 2 is 0, but when you differentiate it, f dash x is what? 4x minus 4. 4x minus 4. Uh, wait, 4x minus So it will be 2x minus 4. Ah, obviously. I'm doing the differentiation wrong. 2x minus 4. Notice that f dash 2 is also 0, right? Whenever you have a repeated root situation, the reason it happens is because if you have a repeated root, it is like x minus r to the power something, right? To the power 2 and something else, g of x. Then even you do f dash x, you will get 2x minus r g of x plus x minus r whole square g dash x. And f dash r is 0 because both terms have a factor of x minus r, right? I hope that is clear to everyone. Yes, sir. You have to use that logic to try to prove that this function cannot have a repeated root. The way to prove the way to prove anything like this, show that it has not, no no it doesn't have a property, is to usually the best way is proved by contradiction. Assume that it has the property. So what should we assume? F of x is equal to zero has a repeated root. Let's call it R. Correct. If it has a repeated root at r, we, we know that f of r is 0 and f dash r is also 0, right? Yes, sir. So let's write f of r. f of r is r power n by n factorial plus r power n minus 1 by n minus 1 factorial, so on, till r plus 1 is 0. What is the derivative? Let's do the derivative here you will get n x bar n minus 1. So it will become x bar n minus 1 by n minus 1 factorial. Do you realize first term becomes that? Yes, sir. Second term becomes x bar n minus 2 by n minus 2 factorial, right? See, derivative of this, what is coming? Yes, sir. And this term will become a plus 1, right? This is my derivative. Correct? Yes, sir. So 
in the derivative, if I put r, I will get r power n minus 1 by n minus 1 factorial plus r power n minus 2 by n minus 2 factorial. And it will go on till plus 1 equals 0, till here. Correct? Yes, sir. So since both are 0, these two equations are true. Then you can subtract them and you are getting r power n by n factorial is 0, which implies that r is 0, right? Correct? Yes. So the sir. only way this function can have a repeated root is if the repeated root is 0. But actually, if you see, 0 is not even a root of the original function. Can you see that 0 doesn't satisfy the... Yes, sir. So we are getting from here that R is zero, repeated root is zero, but zero is not a root actually, right? So that is a simple contradiction, right? Yes, sir. I hope everyone is understanding how we are doing it. And this concept of repeated roots and this condition, everyone should remember from now on. Next time you see a question, you should apply this condition. If it is a repeated root, then the function value and the derivative both will become zero. Is it clear? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. It's the condition because of the, mm -hmm. the graph touches the y axis. No, it is the simple condition. It is because x minus r power m and g of x. Let's say fx has m times the m, m repeated roots right here. And each root is r. This is your f of x. Do you understand what I'm saying right now? Okay. So when you differentiate, what will happen? When you differentiate, you'll get m x minus r power m minus 1 g of x plus x minus r power m g dash x, right? Notice that if m is greater than 1, so if m is greater than or equal to 2, two or more repeated roots, then this and this, both the factors has x minus r, right? So then obviously f dash r will also be 0 and f of r is also 0. Sir, that's only zero. I'm asking whether it graphically means what it is. Do you understand what I am saying right now? Yes, sir. This is okay, sir. Graphically, it means that it's touching the curve, not crossing. Sir, I, I told it touching. Okay. Is there any other question right now? Graphically, it means it's not crossing the x-axis, it's touching. This is a double root. Is it clear? Okay, sir. But what if it has more than two roots? Still, it will touch. It can be not. Yes, it will touch. But how will we be able to differentiate whether at that point it has two roots or not? By looking at the derivatives, not graphically. You think it is very easy to draw graphs for fourth degree, fifth degree polynomials? No, sir. When I use Desmos, if we Add more, more Desmos number. is not the solution. Do you think you have Desmos in the exam with you? No, sir. No, sir. Just for curiosity, sir. But uh, it seems whenever the number of roots, number of repeated roots increases, it be, it becomes more parallel to the sir. Yes, because it is touching. It is not cutting. It has to touch multiple times. It will become more and more parallel, but that is not a mathematical criteria. You cannot use that in a problem. Graph becomes parallel in Desmos. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. You have to use the derivative condition, which I just said. If it has three or more multiplicity, you will get double derivative will also be zero. Do you understand? Okay. 
try this problem as homework. Let f of x be a polynomial with integer coefficients f of n evaluates to a prime power for every integer n. Basically, what is a prime power? A prime power is a number of the form p power k where p is prime and k is a positive integer. The question has said that f of n evaluates to a prime power for every integer n. First part is if such a polynomial f of x exists then there is a polynomial g of x with integer coefficients with integer coefficients such that for each non-negative integer n, non-negative integer n, g of n is the perf is a perfect power is a perfect power of a fixed prime number, fixed prime number. By perfect power, it just means in integer exponent of a fixed prime number to is show that gx must be a constant polynomial must be a constant polynomial And part three is prove that f of x is a constant polynomial. So a lot of conditions are being said. You have to go in a step-by-step -step manner and try to prove this. Think about this condition the fact that f of n is always p power k, some prime number power k, and then if such a polynomial exists, you have to show that there is another polynomial gx with integer coefficients such that for every n greater than or equal to 0, g of n is also a prime power. And then part 2 and part 3 are proving that g of x and f of x are both constant polynomials. So try it out. It's a proof based problem. That is the homework for Monday's class. Make sure that you have attempted this. I will discuss this in Monday's class first. That's all for now. Try this question sir, before sir, the next class. Sir, uh, last day you have given uh, three homework actually. That was very easy. So I've not discussed it. Have you done it? So can I so can I get the uh, answer actually? Because I have uh, send I the answers two. on WhatsApp. Those are very easy. Okay. Send the answers on WhatsApp. I'll see if it is correct or not. Okay. Uh okay, okay. Uh, I'll send that.
Message but sir, see the third me. one, I I am not able to uh, attend proceeding. So I can't uh, able to solve that third one. The third one is a calculus based question. You have to take derivative. Okay. If you take a derivative, it will come. You have to in the third one. The question was f of x is x cube plus x square plus cx plus d where c and d belong to real and if c is greater than 1 by 3 you have to prove that f has exactly one real root has anybody else done this question nobody has tried the question no, sir. I was also stuck on this one only. So, why do you ask first? He asked first. So, he asked first. So. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Sir, so I have to take the function. Okay. This is the function. Okay. First of all, it's an odd function. F of x is odd degree. Odd degree, there will be either one real root or three real roots. Why am I saying that? Do you know why a cubic equation like this will have one or three real roots? Because sir, if one is imaginary, then other will also be its conjugate hmm. root only. Because C and D are real, other coefficients are one, all coefficients are real basically. Then any imaginary root will occur in pairs, right? So, if there is an imaginary root, it will occur in pairs. If there is no imaginary root, there will be three real roots, right? I hope that is clear to everyone. Yes, sir. Okay. So now, if you think about the nature of the function, one real root type of function would be always increasing or always decreasing, right? This is an example of one real root. If I if I had have function like this, this is an example of three real roots, right? Mm. So what we have to decide, we have to prove that it has exactly one real root. That means it should come out to be either increasing or decreasing this type of graph, right? Mm. So in order to check the nature of the function, you have to take derivative. Derivative is 3x squared plus 2x plus c. This is my derivative. This derivative, if it is always greater than zero, then that would be a function that always fx always increases, right? Yes. If the derivative is always positive, then fx is always increasing. If the derivative can change its sign, then that means it can decrease also somewhere, right? Mm. Yes then that would be this type of function, right? Yeah. So now we just have to see whether this quadratic is always positive or not. If it is always positive, which is, it means it has no real roots. So let's check the discriminant. Discriminant is four minus four into three, 12 C. So if C is greater than one by three, what will happen to the discriminant? It will become negative. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, yes. If C is greater than 1 by 3, discriminant is negative, then the quadratic is always positive. And if quadratic is always positive, that is the first derivative, then function always increases. Yes, sir. And if function always increases, there can only be one root. Correct? Right, sir. The other two questions are very easy. You should be able to do it yourself. If you have gotten the answer, send it to me. Okay, sir. Those are not difficult at all. Okay. Uh, in the same WhatsApp group or uh, individual WhatsApp group? Is how to? Send it on the group, dude. You don't have to ask permission. You can send it wherever. Just send it on the group, whole group chat. Right? Or yes. you can send me privately also. It's fine. Do whatever you feel like. But make sure you okay. try the question that I have sent today. Today's question we will discuss in the next class. So try that. 
Okay, that's all for now. Next class will be on Monday. You guys have to decide amongst yourself what is the suitable time. And let me know so that I can also see if it is working out for me. Actually, sir, uh, as I told you, I should end with, because I'm the working professional. So it would be helpful if uh, it would be uh, organized at uh, 7 o'clock, what earlier you have said. Uh, Saturday is not working, be... right, for you? No, for me, it's a Saturday working. And fortunately, today I have done the half day. That is a problem. That's what I am able to manage it. Fine, we'll keep it at 7 p.m. If 7 p.m. is okay with everyone else. Yes, sir. It's okay. It's okay. Okay, then. Fine, that's all for now. We'll continue on Monday then. Bye.